Hello and good day. My name is William Lewis. I'm the former air traffic manager and now the facility engineer at VZTL, Atlanta Air TCC. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about VE RAM, how to set up VE RAM for your scope as well as the functionality of the system itself. In order to start by getting VE RAM, the first thing we're going to do is download and install the software. You can do this by visiting veram.mediacraft.com. Navigating to the download section. And running the installer program. The next thing that you're going to need after you finish the installer is the facility files on the VZTL website. In order to obtain this installer, we must first log in. Currently, the VERAM facility file is still in the beta testing version as it's the first published version. Once it is out of beta, the VERAM facility files will be located at the same location as all of the VZTL software under the controllers menu in the VZTL software. Since it's still in beta, this VZTL facility file can only be located currently in the forums. Once you have downloaded this file, go ahead and begin by starting your VERAM program, navigating back to your desktop and hitting the desktop shortcut menu. This is going to open up the VERAM software, which currently has no facilities available. We're going to load the Atlanta Center VERAM facility file by clicking the import button. Navigate to the location where you save the facility file and click open. Once the facility file has been loaded in the VERAM, it will show up here with the Atlanta Center and ZTL under the available facilities. To open this facility, simply double click on the Atlanta Center icon. When this first loads up, you're, op you're optioned with three different menus. The first menu is the VSCS, which is used for communications. This is similar to the RDVS for VSTARS or the communications panel on VRC. This we will come back to and discuss on how to properly tune and monitor frequencies using the VSCS as well as landline calls. The next window we can see is the text communications. Just like VSTARS, this window is to communicate with aircraft via text. This window may also be used for private messages. And lastly, the primary display for VERAM. Let's first begin by bringing up a few maps and some new displays to make sure we can see everything of which we're going to control. We can first do this by opening up the ZTL map menu button bar. On this menu button bar displays all of the different maps that are available to be displayed. For starters, let's open up the low west, the high west, our jet routes, and our approach controls. We'll come back and look at the rest of these mounts after we get the VERAM completely set up. Now we don't only want to have center displays, but since we will be providing services top down, we also want to highlight some of our primary TRACONs with the Atlanta, the A80 TRACON, and Charlotte, as well as ground displays. To bring up a new display, simply type in dot new 
display. This is going to open a new display. The first display is still hidden behind this, primary, this secondary display. To resize this display, simply click on the new window, hit Control and Enter. This will bring up a bar of which you can select and be able to reduce the size of this display. Let's say we want to use this display to display the A80 Tracon and utilize the A80 Tracon maps. Again, this map bar here is only for VZTL. In order to bring up the A80 maps, we need to pull up the maps for A80. In order to chain maps, let's first go ahead and see what maps are available to us. You can do this by typing MR and clicking Enter. This brings up in the response area available geo maps. ZTL, ATL, and Charlotte. For A80, we want to use the ATL map. To select the ATL app, simply type the command MR and the map name. Once this is done, the map is now loaded into the map menu bar for A80. Let's go ahead and bring up for a West configuration. Once we've done this, you can see that the Tracon map is now displayed. We may now zoom in to the appropriate level and then move the display to a desired location. Once you have the display set to your desired location, hit Control Enter to lock it. Let's go ahead and do this three more times. Second one bringing a Charlotte Tracon map, then an Atlanta ground map, as well as a Charlotte ground map. I go ahead and type the dot new display command three times to bring up three separate maps. Let's first create one for the Charlotte Tracon. an Atlanta ground map. In order to display the Atlanta ground, we must first be in top-down mode. In order to switch to top-down mode, we simply select Control and the letter T. Once we have done this, we can open up the ground display for this map. Notice if I press Control T again, the display disappears the ground map is only available in top-down mode. And lastly, a Charlotte ground map. Again, do not forget to change to top-down mode.
I suggest not making your primary display run the full width of your screen. We'll talk about this later, but what will happen is that the leader length lines will become excessively long. Again, we'll show a demonstration of this later. We now have all four maps up, which we're going to use to control Atlanta Center using a top-down configuration. This is going to be our primary setup, with the exception of now changing some items in order to set some friendlier color settings and other user items, which is at the sole discretion of each user. Before we do this, let's go ahead and sign on as an observer so we can start seeing the display work in action live on the network. Select the server which has their lowest ping rate for your facility. The best option is usually the server which is closest to your location. If you would like to know the actual ping rates for each server, simply open up VZTL VATSPY, select the server tab, and test the ping on each one of the available servers. Set your default call sign and your observer call sign. as well as your rating, and leave the facility as center. Later we'll add some controller information which may be useful to the pilots, as well as directing them to the VZTL site for things such as feedback or events. The settings dialog box automatically uh, prompts us to change to the audio tab in order to set our microphone and headsets and speaker devices. You can always do this manually by clicking on the audio tab. We also want to set a push to talk assignment. and apply the settings. Once you've applied the settings, go ahead and calibrate the microphone. Test. One, two, three, four, five. Once you've completed this test, you should hear yourself in your headset. You can also review the different settings on the Generals tab. This first checkmark box is asking you if you would like to use the Tab key to close the text communications window. Again, this is the text communications window of which when this option is selected you can use the tab to be able to close and open the text communications window. Since I'm using two screens for my desktop I do not need to have the text communications dialog box closed in order to help me declutter my scope. I can simply move my text communications box over to my other screen. Because of this, I will not check the tab key closes text communication window option. The next is enable handoff and point out sounds. These are the same handoff and point out sounds that you hear in VRC and VERAM. This is simply at each user's discretion of whether or not they would like the sound to play or not. I like to hear the sound, I will keep the option checkmarked. The next is prompt to confirm when closing VERAM while connected. It does just that. If you attempt to close VERAM while you're still connected to the network, a dialog box will warn you that you're about to disconnect while you're still connected. If you do not want this option, you may simply turn off again at each user's discretion. You may change the font settings for each text message by clicking on the box, selecting the desired font, the font style, and the size, and hitting OK.
We all may also adjust our aircraft select key. This is the same as when we use it in VRC and VSTARS, with the exception of this will not work to type in commands onto the radar displays. It will only be used for the text communications box. The data block time share speed is the time at which items will rotate in the third line of a full data block. This would be items such as an incorrect beacon code or other timeshare information such as emergency, radio failure, or hijack. My preference is to leave this at the default settings, and so I leave it at it too. Again, this is another option, which is at each user's preference. Once we're finished adjusting our general settings, simply click OK to close the dialog box. To sign in, we must use the sign in command, which is simply SI, followed by the call sign of which you would like to log on for. If you're using an underscore observer, VERAM will log you in as an observer. If you use underscore CTR, it will log you in as a center controller. For observing, we will simply use the underscore observer. To sign out, we use a sign out command, which is SO. And then a simple enter will sign back out. In order to quick this command, we may simply press the F12 button, which will add our default call sign plus the sign in function. We can quickly sign in as an observer by pressing Control F12, which is sign in ZTL, and as an observer. Selecting enter at this will again log you in. This is our first video on VERAM in order for initial setup. The next video will start discussing the different menu options and how to adjust the display settings for your scope. Of course, all this information is available on the VERAM MediaCraft website under Documentation and Controller's Guide. If you have any further questions, feel free to utilize the forums at forums.vatsim.net under the Members Helping Members ATC Software VERAM subforum. Or you may use the VZTL forums under Forum, VZTL Controller Forum, Facility Documentation and Software, and the VZTL VERAM facility file for version 1. Lastly, you may always open a ticket under the Contact Us menu so it's a support system. Again, my name is William Lewis, and in our next video we will continue to discuss VERAM as well as some of its features. We look forward to seeing you then.